So after a year, I figured it was finally time to put out an update on my Pixel tablet experience running Graphene OS. Spoiler alert, my original video had some high ambitions of replacing my laptop and taking this with me when I travel along with a keyboard and things like that. Uh, none of that happened, didn't work out. But if you're curious as to the why, keep watching. If all you wanted was that quick answer, and there you go, and I'll see you next time. So before I get into the apps that I'm using and things like that, I first wanna talk about the physical aspects of the tablet that I really like. So to begin, let's start with the case. This is the official case from Google. And if you end up buying the tablet after watching this video or have bought the tablet, I highly suggest you buy this case. It's probably one of the best design cases I've ever used. Not that I've used many cases, but to start off, it's a nice rubbery, grippy texture. So that helps with gripping and holding onto it. And besides that, you have this circle thing on the back or oval, I should say. And that's great for a kickstand for holding it up in the landscape position. It also works in the portrait position. So it can lean back like that. And when you're just kind of walking around or laying on your couch, it works great for holding it just like this. You might be wondering why it's that shape. So we see those four pins on the bottom there. Those correspond to the dock. So when this goes on the dock, the handhold or whatever that metal thing is, helps align the dock so that it locks into those pins and you have a good connection. It's all magnetic, so the dock just snaps on. And this is the only way I charge it. I've never actually plugged a USB cable into this besides the installation. So the case, I highly recommend it. Now back to the dock. The dock is included in the box. I'm not going to say that the dock is free because of course I'm sure that's baked into the price somewhere, but the dock has exceeded my expectations, mostly from an audio standpoint. When you set the dock on this, this then turns into the main speaker. The internal speakers on the tablet are disabled and the audio comes out of this. So for listening to music or podcasts, things like that, I mean, you're not getting room filling, booming audio, but they are pretty impressive for the form factor. I like using this when I'm listening to podcasts or audiobooks on the tablet. Uh, it just works really great for that. Speaking of podcasts, I wanted to let you know that I just published the first episode of my podcast, which is called In the Shell. You can check that out at intheshellpodcast.com to find out where you can listen to it. And I will also leave a link down below in the description if you want to check it out. So now let's get back to the reason why you clicked this video. Uh, one more thing to mention on the physical appearance, I don't use a screen protector on the tablet. They do make them for it. I just never found a need for it. It's not like a cell phone where I'm carrying it around, constantly taking it out of my pocket. This wouldn't fit in my pocket. So I didn't really see a need to have a screen protector. So far after a year, it looks good. No chips, cracks, or scrapes. Hope I didn't jinx myself, but so far so good. So on the actual tablet, I have two user profiles set up. I have my main owner admin user profile that you can see here, and I have my you or Josh user profile. So my main owner profile in there, I have Google Play Store installed along with Obtanium. And so on that profile, I do all the installation of apps, and then I use the install available apps feature from the main owner profile to push the apps to my daily profile. It was suggested to me a while ago to test out that method and I've been using it ever since on my phone and tablet. I'm not going to cover it in this video, but I will make a dedicated video specifically for that topic because I think it's a really useful way to configure your Graphene OS device. So like I said, I have two user profiles set up. We're currently in my daily profile that I use, the one named Josh, you can see in the top right hand corner up there. So on the main home screen, I have two progressive web apps installed, PWAs. One is for Miniflux, that's a self-hosted RSS reader that I use, along with Wallabag, which is kind of a bookmarking tool, and it's another self-hosted app that I use. So let's now swipe up and get to the app drawer. I'm not going to explain the default apps installed, like camera gallery info. If you have Graphene OS, you have those installed in your device, so you'll kind of be familiar with those. So to start off, I have AntennaPod. Use that for listening to podcasts. Like I said, that goes really well with the dock. You get really good audio quality and it works well for listening to those. Next app is Audio Bookshelf. That is a self-hosted app I use to listen to my audiobooks. Next one is Bitwarden, password manager, uh, just a calendar app. EddieSync, that's a contacts, calendar, and task sync app, encrypted task sync app. 
That's another self-hosted app that I use. They also have a cloud offering. So if you're looking for an encrypted way to store your calendar contacts and tasks, I would suggest checking out IDSync. You don't have to self-host it. You can just sign up and use their service. Following that, we have Jellyfin. So I run a Jellyfin server at my house for my movies and TV shows that I want to watch. Jelly, the Jellyfin app lets me access and watch those on the tablet, which the 11-inch screen on this works perfect for. It's much nicer than trying to watch on my phone. Material Files, that's a third-party file explorer. My NAS that I have in my house, I have some network shares, and Material Files supports connecting to those. So that's primarily what I use that for. I don't have that installed on my phone because I don't access my network shares on my phone, but on the tablet with a larger screen, it works great for that. Malvad is my VPN of choice. I have that running on here all the time. Newpipe, that's a third-party client for YouTube. Kind of helps you avoid the ads, which is nice. Notify is the next app, and that is something that provides push notifications to my device when it receives a webhook notification from the uptime services that I have, monitoring my site and different services. So it works without Google Play services, which is why I have it installed on here, since I don't have Google Play installed on this user profile. ProtonMail, I use that as my email provider. I have their paid plan, so I use that for my site of burritos.com domain. If you're looking for a decent email provider that's privacy and security focused, I would recommend them. The next one is Standard Notes. I use that for all my note taking. I do have a couple files stored in there, but primarily just text files. I self hosted the Standard Notes server at my house, so it syncs locally to a Raspberry Pi where I have that running. They do have a cloud offering, so if you're looking for an encrypted notes service, I would suggest checking them out. Next one is Tasks, and that syncs with EddySync, which, like I mentioned earlier, syncs Context, Calendar, and Tasks. So that just lets me display my tasks and look at them. Tuta is another privacy slash security email provider. They support end-to-end -end encryption, just like Proton does, which means they have no access to your emails or the content of them. I've always wanted to test them out. So when I set up the email for Yellowball, the podcast hosting provider that I recently launched, I decided to go with them. And so far, so good. I like their product. I like their interface. As a company, I kind of prefer them over Proton. Proton's kind of turning into a commodity that seems like they're just launching more products and everyone's using, which I also appreciate because that means they're more accessible to the masses. But at the same time, it's kind of nice to get those companies that are you know niched down in the privacy and security, and Tuta seems like they are. And the last app is VLC. I use that to play any files that the default gallery app can't play. VLC basically plays any file you throw at it. Sometimes I think it'll play a text file. Uh, it's just one of those solid apps to have. So like I mentioned in the intro, I had high ambitions for this, you know, plug it into an external monitor, plug it into a keyboard, possibly use it as my full-time device, but this, it's just not going to replace a laptop, especially for someone like me doing programming, editing, recording videos, things like that. The, the interface just isn't meant, at least at this point, for a mouse and keyboard to be as productive or even close to a laptop, at least from my perspective. Again, your results may vary. But that being said, would I recommend this to someone? And if you want to use it like me, where 99% of the time I use it as an entertainment device, so you know, watching YouTube videos, watching Jellyfin, checking my email, or browsing the web, then absolutely, I think this is a great device to purchase. But other than that, I don't really use it for much else. So I hope I didn't disappoint you too much. And if you have any questions about the tablet, feel free to leave those down below, and I will see you next time.